Welcome back to Sussex Farms for episode 14 with me, Mr. Sealy P. Off the back of the last episode, I am up at field two on the fertilising contracts. It's a massive field and it's going to take some time, so I will see you probably just at the end. And there we are. Done. It took a while. <laughs> I kept thinking, I'll do other things, but I couldn't. Um, there wasn't really much else to do. So, next contract. What shall I do? I think maybe transport one from the airport, 15 grand. Oh, bakery. There's one down there for 19. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a few contracts, um, but I won't make, won't make you watch all of them. I'm just going to build up a bit of money, I think, is the best thing. A bit of money in the bank, um, and let's get a few jobs done. down at the bakery. Now, this is the kind of, this is the next setup, the next evolution of my transport jobs. Various different things I've tried and, you know, um, because of this update to the CSZ pack and that bag lifter, which I'm finding to be kind of invaluable, um, it's far easier than trying to use pallet forks and, you know, the, all the paraphernalia you get that goes along with that. Now, unfortunately, with some transport jobs I have found using these, um, Pallets don't always look like they're locked onto the trailer, but they are. And it sometimes straps to the bottom of the pallet, not the top. And using this bag lifter, the straps don't always look like they're going around the pallets. The ones here at the bakery appear to be the ones that don't. Most others do. So it may look like it's a bit unrealistic, but the straps are supposed to have gone around that pallet. And they don't. I'm not sure why. Um, but it still picks them up. So imagine if you can the straps are going around that pallet and everything will be fine <laughs> i just thought you know like i said um or i you know maybe i said it maybe i thought it probably thought it um you know i, I said right at the, the start that i wanted to show off what, what the map could do all the features of it all the things you can do added into that i said about trying out different mods and different things that i haven't used before and as new mods come out that's kind of what i do i try and Use, use things in my let's plays or you know whatever I'm doing at that particular time um, so yeah just doing a, a bit of everything and I could keep doing water runs and fuel runs and that kind of stuff but transport jobs are part and parcel as a fertilizing contracts I thought this might be easier just to skip ahead um, there we go we are loaded I'm just thinking actually what I could have done possibly for the next one is if I leave a couple of them strapped onto that bag handler and then strap them down then my skid steer loader won't move yeah potentially right let's get them sold So down the transport company at the uh, docks. I say it'll do two. It, the straps will strap over. You know, if, if I had four of them, it will do kind of four. Again, you've kind of at that point, you, you've got to kind of throw realism out the window a little bit. It, it just, if you've got them too close together, it will latch on to loads. And if you pick up too many in one go, it can tip up whatever vehicle you're using. So we are done. It's another 19,000. So what I'm going to do now is a few more jobs. Um, I'll probably just show you like little clips just bits and bobs of me doing them and possibly just screenshots of the payments at the end maybe that might be the best thing and then we'll crack on with what we're going to be doing for the rest of today's episode
five minutes past seven. It's late spring, we are a month on. Animals have just all been fed. I've just been scoping out the pig situation. Actually, I've left that guy open. Not that it matters, because we haven't actually got any pigs at the moment, so that's not a problem. Um, yeah. We might be doing pigs today. We have got a load of wool to sell. If we go into our menu and go across to economy, wool, this month is at its highest point. But what's interesting as well is we have... Uh, a new cell point, a new cell point in town, creating waves amongst the local population and community. Um, if we look into our menu, we have got the Edge Grain Vault has been opened up, and it's up near uh, Sweet Potato, um, the Sweet Potato cell point. So, looking across at that, where are we? Bearing in mind, wool is at it's the most worth the most this month. At the spinnery, the price is falling, which I find peculiar. And at the edge grain vault, it's going up. It's lower than the spinnery at the moment, but it is climbing. So that's going to be an interesting one. What I'm going to do is wa water. I give water to the cows and the sheep. The rest has been done. I've done their feed, done straw, cleared out the feed areas. When we get down there, I'll show you the trailer of wool we've got. And like I said before, if you are... Um, if you're doing your sheep, the sheep will give you wool around springtime. So it might well be if you bought them after spring or late spring or early summer, you might not see any wool production until the following spring. Um, I got wool production immediately because I bought them early spring and they were already in that position where they could produce wool. So it just happened to be kind of the luck of the uh, luck of the draw, I suppose. So at some point today, we're going to sell that wool. If that money keeps climbing, if what it's worth keeps climbing at the edge grain vault, then that's going to be where I'm going to do it. None of our fields are ready to harvest yet. Let's fill that up with water. Both sets of animals are probably going to take more than I've put in there. Uh, but we'll check our growth. There we go. So yeah, the grain vault is up here by sweet potato and up where the fuel is and the free lime. Our field six is now fully fertilised, although look, weeds, hmm, not happy about that, I've sorted that out. Field seven and eight, if we look at our growth, that's now gone from planted to it is growing. These two are still sitting on this growth stage and haven't done anything yet. Same with field 11, and the same with field 30, uh, 38, oh come on, I sprayed all of these. I want to go over and do some more some more weed spraying unfortunately or weeding I could just take the weeder over and do that that'll be an easier option if it's just small patches or is that a patch where it just hasn't grown yeah that's not pink is it that's just harvested okay we might be all right there of course it is what am I talking about um so yes yeah, so I know our fields ready to harvest yet the ones we bought already had crops in nothing doing there but that's what it is so that's why I thought you know what we've got our sheep our cows on the go. I'm going to buy 10 pigs. I'm not going to buy 20. I'm not going to go mad. I'm going to buy 10. I'm going to get some Yorkshires. As with all the other animals at the moment, I'm going to have to buy pig food until I can produce, or what I could do is buy the constituent parts because I haven't got any corn in the ground anywhere. So even if I did decide I was going to do it from crops, I don't have any cornfields. So it won't be till next year, if I plant a cornfield this year, that I'll be able to get anything. So I'm, I may well have to just buy, that might be a better option, rather than just buying pig food, buy the actual corn itself. It might actually work out cheaper buying the, uh, big, buying the pig food, but we'll see. Now, while that's doing that, this is all the wool we've got. It's not loaded particularly neatly. The problem I have got is, because I double stacked them all over there when I was storing them, when I picked them up with that this thing is brilliant I love it the pallet bag lifting thing is absolutely superb but I've suddenly remembered the big popper seed reminded me on Washo that this trailer won't strap double it would only strap a single layer so where I double stacked them already but I just I earlier on I drove around the field and they didn't move at all 
so I might just take a punt and take them down as they are but we've got a few pallets here and if that price continues to go up we should make a nice little bit of money not massive amounts of money but we'll, but we'll make a nice bit of money shouldn't be too bad so that's all the wool we've got at the moment there's still wool being produced and that will start dropping off um, fairly soon I would imagine so we'll take this over to the cows I'm thinking possibly I won't be able to fertilise this grass field until it's been cut once. We are producing manure as well, which is great, because it means we can either then start muck spreading fields, or, until we've got fields that we can muck spread, because at the moment they're all growing, we could sell that to the BGA. We haven't got a huge amount, but we could do. So we have options. Uh, our money has gone up, I should have mentioned that right at the start, shouldn't I? As you've already seen from the start, I've been doing contracts, fertilising contracts and transport contracts. I did some of those before we kind of went through the night. I didn't skip the night, I sped up time a little bit, simply because um, it was, they were producing wool, the sheep were producing wool at such a rate I couldn't risk that, that um, pallet point being filled up. Too much of a gamble. Um, so, and as it turned out, I think overnight they produced about seven or eight pallets. Had I have left it, I would have only had four on that point and wouldn't have got any more. So, now I did say about getting another grass field, didn't I? Somebody messaged me to say field 30 something. What was it? One of them was a grass field. Oh, was it 34? How much was 34? 60 grand. Or we got field three, which is 53. I'm thinking field 50, um, field 53, field 3, simply because it's closer to the farm as well. You know what, I said about doing that, didn't I? Should we buy it? Yep, let's buy it. So we own that grass field now as well. Gives us a few more options when it comes to making hay or making silage. Um, the grass is still sitting at 67%, it's not fully grown yet. But um, at some point we'll be able to fertilise and cut and do whatever we need to. I'm going to need to put some more water in there for the cows. So I'll do that. And let's sort out getting a trailer. And we'll just go and get ten pigs. We'll get the ball rolling on those. It's the day of pigs. Not to be confused with. Yeah. That that dodgy incursion involving Castro. Anyway, for the younger of you, you may not even know what I'm talking about, but... Right. The class is up at the store. We have leased um, an animal trailer, which I'm going to go and collect in a minute. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the straw, I'll try and put in the straw, um, now, I don't know how much I'm going to need for 10, probably not much, but I'll fill this up. What I've also done is I've placed the water pump. But here's the thing. I did say when I did my kind of guide to look at all the various different animals, that if you add a barn with an indoor water trough, that could prove difficult. I had a few people say to me they managed to place them in doorways and stuff like that. Now I tried all round here and it wouldn't let me, but then someone did message me. It might be the Black Knight, I think. Anyway, and said that the actual um, trigger for it is very large. It's like a disc that goes out quite large. So, what I did was a bit of a test. I saved the game and I came all the way up to about here before it would let me place it. It let me place it around this area here, but obviously that was in the way of where I want to back up the trailer. It allowed me to place it out about here, but again I thought for driving through it's going to get in the way. So I went all over here, thought it was fairly close to the fence. Any closer and it went red wouldn't let me do it, so I placed it there. And I thought, if it doesn't work, it doesn't matter, because I'll just go back to my previous save game and it won't matter, it's not an issue. Um, as it turned out, I've placed it. If we go into the menu and we look at our pick enclosure, it says water, water pump. It also says 25 litres. If we go inside to our trough, there's water in the trough. So it worked all the way out there. That's where I've placed it. <laughs> and it's working. So you know what? I'm going with it. I'm, I'm happy with that. 
So I thought if I put the straw in first, we, sh we will avoid that situation whereby you might get a little bit of slurry until you put the straw in from the animals. And I wanted to get some water and bits in before, um, before it became an issue. So let me do straw there. Now that's all I'm going to put in for the time being, because when we actually unload the pigs into here, they'll probably take some more. I would imagine they'll take some more. Um, what I'm also going to do, like I said, I'm going to buy the crop. I'm going to buy the crops. I'm not going to buy pig food. What I'm also going to do is keep a tally of how much the, the pigs cost me, and then how much I spend out on feed, until we get to a point where we can provide our own or whatever we're going to do. Then when we come to sell them, I'm going to work out if we have made a profit. It's a difficult thing to do when you're doing it as a, as a test to show people, look, this is how pigs work, without going through you know such a long period of time. But I thought for doing 10 pigs, and while I'm doing it anyway, I might as well, as, as a farmer, keep a tally of what I'm spending, my expenditure versus my income, and we'll see how we go. So that's what I'll do. I'll keep a tally of what we've spent out. Obviously, there's the outlay for the farm and all that kind of thing. I'm not going to include that. The water pump, potentially, I could put that into the figures. But you don't need one of those. You don't have to have a water pump. You can just do it with normal, you know, normal water runs. Go old school. <laughs> Bring a bucket. Just do it with a bucket. Anyway, so I'm going to go and get the animal trailer. We'll go and pick up our 10 Yorkshires and then we'll go and sort out some feed. Right then. I've leased a modded one. Um, what I've also done is uh, the whole going to buy crops. We've got a little kind of farmer's market, another kind of a separate garden centre type thing that I've, I've set up just because I want the ability to be able to do this. We can simulate the fact that I'm going to go and buy crops from another farm, another farmer, a farmer's market, or, you know, wherever I've decided to do it. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm playing the game as just playing the game. You know, it's just that's the whole point. So, actually, I'm going to leave the cover on for the time being. Let's go down to... Uh, should I go the back way again? Doesn't really matter, no. Uh, <laughs> it, really, it really doesn't matter. Head down the hill, go to the livestock market, pick up our pigs. This I picked this trailer in particular. The bigger ones that require a lorry to pull will do loads like 30 something, 36, one of them will do. Um, some of the smaller ones will only do like 8 or 9 or something like that. This one does, I think, 13 or 14 pigs, something like that. So for the 10 I need to get, it's absolutely perfect. seriously considering what jobs I'm going to need to do when we get to the point where we are ready to harvest we need to buy a harvester and we're going to need the funds to do that so uh, yeah I don't know we'll have a think about that maybe just manure I might do a couple of manure runs we'll see how much manure the uh, cows chuck out and how much the pigs do combined we might be able we're not going to get massive amounts in there but I can always come up to the livestock market here help them out by when they're doing their mucking out grab manure from up here and sell that at the biogas plant and then um, I don't know it's, it'll all add to the, what we've got in the bank and then we'll see what we can afford harvester wise it may even mean taking a loan out potentially potentially so let's drop the back deal we are there so let's go for where you want um where are they yorkshire so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten no transport fee um that would have been was it 100 per animal so that would have worked out a grand and i think we only leased the trailer for about 600 maybe i know it's it's a piffling amount i mean it's saved us a couple of hundred pounds but you know uh right confirm i always do that i forget to confirm i'd, I'd rather someone handed me you know said yeah i have 200 pound i know in game you go ah oh, it's like 200 isn't it what's the point 
Okay, cover on. Let's get them down to the farm. Back to the farm, so down. Now it may well be that I'm biting off more than I can chew by doing three animal types with seasons on <laughs> and harvesting and setting up everything else it may be too much potentially I can't even see where the gate is nope can't see either side of the trailer either not even close to being lined up Soon find out when I hit a fence post. Please, oh, hit something. <laughs> right. Okay, we're there. Okay, so cover off. Click on that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Confirm. Raise that back up. Cover back on. So we have our ten. Let's check and see now if it's going to take more straw for bedding. Someone asked me, oh who was it? Again, can't remember, sorry I do apologise. Why do I always get into the tractor on this side? That's a habit I got into when I was trying to say to myself, you know, you need to try and do things a bit more realistically. Not completely realistically, not a full realism type thing. Um, but when you get into most tractors, and look inside the console is here generally speaking on the older tractors you can get in either side because the console is a bit further back but a lot of the more modern tractors all your screens and stuff all come all around this side normally so you're normally getting that side simply because you can't get in that side um, and I just kind of got into the habit of doing it I don't know why I just did it just oh there you go didn't take much more so pig enclosure their health is going to plummet if I'm not careful. They have got some water, but only 25 litres. They're going to need some more. So we're going to do corn. See, I've got wheat growing, and I think I've got canola growing. So potentially, once those are okay, it's corn I'm going to be short of, which I'm going to need to get. They only require 12,768 litres for the year? It's not going to take very much feed at all. So I need to buy a little bit of each and keep a track of it. Um, so that is what we'll do. I'm going to head off. Actually, I can probably do it with this trailer. Having the narrows on this doesn't help, but what I'll probably do is... If I grab, like, 20,000 litres of each, like, fill this up for each. Wheat, corn, and... What we don't use, we'll put into storage. Whichever's the cheapest. Probably canola. Soybeans quite expensive. Right, put this into storage. Actually, what I will do, I think, what I'll do is just switch over the tyres for the time being. I can, you know, at the end of the day, I can drive across the map with these on, these narrows. Would you be driving around the roads, hauling backwards and forwards with narrows on? No. So I'll go and change the tyres over on this. We'll whiz over, we'll grab our first bit, we'll get corn first, and then we'll get the other two. And I'll show you where we're getting it from. It's not far from uh, Silly P cell point and Silly EG cell point. But like I say, it was just something I thought, you know what, I'll, I'll set it up as part of the. You know, what I'm doing. Why did I come this way? Oh, there is a gap in the fence, isn't there? If I can get along the side of the crop now. Oh, I've got narrows on, but the trailers. So our crop here is growing. That's doing alright.
There we go. Uh. Really do not want to be having a run in with the CVG bakery drivers. Well, I don't have to keep coming over here. I could place a toolbox mod over at the main farm if I want to. I like the process. The one thing I did find last time I did this, because I changed the tyre type, at the moment I'm as far forward as I can go, which is where I need to be. When I changed the tyre type from standard to narrows, because the standard tyres were out further and it went to narrows, it kind of automatically pushed the tractor little, back a little bit. So when I tried to lower the, the lift, it left the tractor up in the air. Not because of anything I'd done, it was just simply because the tyre changed, that was all. Does this need any maintenance? It does need a bit of maintenance. Am I going to repaint it? No. Customise, yes. Uh, we want to go to standard, narrows. Oh, that's all we've got option off, haven't we? Uh, let's customise. That's done. It should come down now. Yeah, it's fantastic. Right, let's go over there. Okay, we're just about to turn into Sealy Lane, just here, Sealy G Bakery, down past Sealy uh, P Brewery, and on the end, we've got a silo where we can collect various different crops should we choose to. There's a seed point, a fertiliser point, there's a barn shed there building for whatever needs to be in here but it's kind of like a just a little mini collection point garden centre type thing now for a farmer in need the edge castiga points are absolutely fantastic now I said 20,000 litres I said I'd fill this but we might have to see what this starts to cost first um, we need corn let's see how quickly the money goes down shall we horrendously. I do need to keep a tally of this. Oh, blimey. Okay. Oh, that was almost as much as the pigs cost. Or was it as much as the pigs cost? Probably. Um, okay, so 9849. Okay. That should last us a little while though, because it did say it only required 12,000 litres of everything for the entire year, so potentially what we're buying now could last us so it could last us. If it gets us through the first year and then we can produce our own, it's all good then. So it may be a bit of an outlay to start off with, but it's not the end of the world. So I will come back and I will get wheat, and then I will come back and I will get probably... Hmm, that's a good point, actually. Let's see what they normally sell for. Um... If we look at the prices for things, that's kind of a gauge as to what you're going to be paying out, I mean, realistically. Um, if we come up and look at wheat, actually barley's cheaper, isn't it? So potentially if we buy the barley, that's going to be cheaper than buying wheat. Um, then we look along at our canola, sunflower and soybean. Canola is the cheapest, isn't it? assuming that when you buy it it's going to be cheaper because of what the price is for, for selling so we'll say we'll go canola I think so corn, wheat and canola with seasons on no uh, root crops required so 
I would go and get those, we'll fill them up and then we'll see where we stand, how much of it I've actually used in a minute. Well, for you, for mere seconds. For me, it might take a little bit longer. But... Okay, just put canola in. I only bought just over ten, just over, just under ten thousand liters of canola. I made a mistake and I bought wheat instead of barley. I got overexcited and I clicked on it straight away. I could have gone and sold it actually, made a bit of money, then gone back and got barley. But I thought, you know what, I've got it now. Um, so what I'll do is I'll add on what the pigs cost me because I forgot to make a note of that at the time. But when I go back and do the editing, I'll, I'll add that on, and I'll keep a track of that as we go further along. Along those lines, what I'm going to do is just fill the water up, actually, but um, something I've been thinking about a lot lately, um, and it was kind of off, off the back of um, conversations I've had with various different people, actually, um, about a lot of these things, about costing things out and is it worth doing them in the long run. And it's funny, it's something I've thought about, and it's about to get a bit deep and a bit heavy here, but... <laughs> Um, if you if you look at a lot of things in life, if you boil them down to the simple fact of the effort in, um, and then the payout at the end, not just monetary, but I know with farming, yes, it is monetary. There's going to be a monetary outcome. You have to. That's how you pay your bills. That's how you you know that's how you survive and you keep your farm running. But with a lot of things in life, if you look at them on paper. If you wrote down what you do, the time in and the energy in, the expenditure and whatever it might be, most things you would say to yourself, it's just not worth doing. Why am I bothering? Because what I potentially get out of it, if it is monetary, um, doesn't seem to be worth it. But the thing about it is, it's not always just about the monetary aspect. If you think about a lot of things you do in life, it's about the life lessons learned. It's about the skills you might pick up. It's about the experience, about possibly meeting people. I know it sounds corny, but it's about the journey. It's not always about just the destination. It's not always about the end result. It's about everything you experience along the way. I think those types of things you can't put a monetary value on. So with regard to, you know, if you boiled it all down to going back to just playing the game or doing this, Especially with a lot of the places where you can buy a lot of things now and on certain maps where you can buy straw, you can buy silage. No, you could potentially do all of that, make a fortune and not actually do any particular farming of any kind. I find the fun and the enjoyment and the excitement is doing a lot of the things. I like experiencing everything maps have to offer. I like trying everything out. Um, so if you do stop and ask yourself, is it worth doing pigs? Is it worth doing cows? The fun and enjoyment of actually running them and caring for them and sorting the feed out and the buying and the selling and the, you know, the nurturing them, getting to the point where they need to be, that is the experience. That's the, the, the point, I think, isn't it? More than just the monetary, am I going to make a load of money out at the end of this? I don't know. That's just my own personal opinions, my own personal feeling on it. I just, you know, I'm sure there are plenty of people that feel the same way. Um, but anyway, I think we are now at a point where, let's jump out of that, uh, if we go into our animal menu, our pigs now, cleanliness is fine, water is in, the water pump's there to make sure it doesn't run out, straws full, corn, wheat and canola we put in, and we're good to go. Uh, we've got a little bit of manure on the go, they will get to a point they're going to start reproducing at some point. Um, all good chickens not sure about the moment maybe we'll do some chickens as well horses are still a bit of a quandary for me i haven't done a, a look at the horses because it's a little bit of a complicated one with eight different breeds and they all have various different characteristics 
I'm trying to work out, still trying to work out the best way of looking at those objectively. Um, but anyway, that said, I think we are there for today's episode. The Day of Pigs. We have them. We're off to a good start. Everything's looking great. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching.